Okay. Hello, ladies. Let me see if I can get everybody in here so I can see you. How is everybody doing? You can unmute yourself. Oh, sounds good to me. <laughs> hey, Kale. It's been a long time. Okay, well, we'll just get to the to the class, go straight in. Welcome everyone. And this is gonna be the first one of a series of, uh, well, this will be the first, the a series of six. So we'll have um, five more after these. And um, let me get this, okay. And <clears throat> one of the things that I'm gonna be doing in each one of them is have um, short video. This one is the longest and it's 10 minutes, uh, but um, this sets the whole from birth all the way to teenage years. So it sets the, the whole lifespan and then we'll take each class a little portion of that, zero to three, a three to five, eight to 12, uh, then, you know, teenagers. So um, that way, those are little short videos. So I am going to start by sharing my screen with you. Here you go. Because I like to start from the beginning with God. <laughs> so this is something that I would love for all of us to say. You don't have to unmute yourself, but do say it out loud because there is something about being able to set your mind. You know, we all come together when we say things together. That's why we repeat in the word it's being spoken out loud is because when you're reading and you're, you're speaking, your concentration goes there. So uh, not only are you looking at it, you are saying it, you are hearing it, and your heart is receiving the word. So, and the word goes out and always accomplishes what the Lord wants it to do. So that we wanna do that first of all. So let's say this together. The steadfast love of Jehovah never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And if we can keep that in mind throughout this whole teaching and throughout what I want you to do today when we watch that video, <clears throat> and I don't know everybody's background, and it may be, um, it may be a little um, traumatic uh, by some of the, I know it was for my husband when I showed it to him uh, because of his background. So. Uh, but this is what we want to do today. Today, we want to go to us because the first thing we want to do in order to take care of our children or our children's children, our grandbabies, is uh, we have to uh, put the mask, the oxygen mask first on us. But before I go there, I just wanted to reiterate this because our hearts need to hear this. You have no idea how many times we have to hear this because we're not always taught this uh, from, from our own homes or from the pulpit or from whatever uh, teaching environment you have grown is that God's love for us never <laughs> ceases. So you cannot go too far that you're going to lose his love. Uh, you never will lose that. He cannot. He is love. There is no way that he can just not be who he is. So um, it is important that we keep that in mind. In every decision and every thought we have, those are the little foundations that we have to make very strong in our minds so that we can pass them on to our children. Because when we have fear that we can lose that love, we pass it on to them. And they think, uh, is mommy going to love me after I, this? Is what's going to happen? And, and they need to be so secure in that, that you can have that good connection. Then his mercies never come to an end. Oh, yeah. 
when you die, then his mercies are gone. And then, you know, you're out in limbo. No, no, no. His mercies never, ever come to an end. Okay. He is merciful yesterday, today, and forever. So keep that in mind. And then I wanted this picture for, it, for you to have it in your mind that every morning, these mercies are new. So whatever, don't think that you, you stood up all yesterday or the day before, they're new today. And those are things that we need to let our children know that whatever happened yesterday, we're starting brand new today. So they don't keep track of this. You know, they, they've heard forever and ever, whether you teach it at home, they hear it in the, on TV, they hear from their friends that Santa Claus is keeping track of, you know, the, whatever they're doing good and whatever they're doing bad. And he checks that list you know, twice and all this stuff. And, and, you know, those are little cute songs that we hear growing up. We hear it in, at malls when we're walking through and air and elevators or whatever you are, um, that they do go in into our minds and into our hearts and they stay there. So when we do something wrong, those little ideas come back and say, uh, it, it, if my mom keep it at the list, is she going to, you know, is this like, like too many? Um, you know, am I gonna get, you know, whatever it is that goes through their little minds, their minds are not set. So whatever you think is not usually what they're thinking. If you ever watch those Rugrats uh, programs are funny in a way, um, not good psychology, but funny uh, because of that, because they, they make you think, what is it that they're really thinking? So keeping that in mind, we go back to this that I said before, we have to put our oxygen max, mask first. And um, we're gonna watch a video today that it's going to uh, give us um, the big panoramic view of life from pregnancy to adolescence. But I don't want you to watch that video thinking of your kids. Oh, yeah, 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 that's what happened to this one or to that one. Ooh, I did that one with that one. You know, no, I don't want you to go to your children. I want you to go when you were growing up. I want you to watch it as you are the kid and that uh, mother is actually your mother or your caregiver, whoever it was that, you know, could have been your grandmother, uh, you could have been raised by your dad or an aunt or um, somebody else. So uh, as you do that and have paper and pencil by you and whatever comes to your mind, write it down because this is what's gonna happen. Our non-conscious is working all the time. You have to remember that part of us, it's part of the spirit of God that gives us life. And what does the word say about God? He never sleeps nor slumbers. So that part of him that it's in us, it's always awake, knows everything about us and has a memory that can hold all that information. So when you're thinking about, when you're watching something, whatever your God desires for you to deal with, and that's why we watch movies and we go like, I didn't see that before, because at the moment that you're watching something, your emotions kick in. And if there's anything from your past that needs to come up to the surface, that non-conscious will bring it up. And when it brings it up, it is for you to deal with it. Whatever comes to our conscious and we don't deal with it, goes back again to the non-conscious stronger. Why I say that? Because this is what science have shown us, that whatever we think the most is the strongest. It grows. So if, I, if something comes up, it makes a little line, a little rot in my memory, and I don't deal with it, it goes down. 
And then when it comes back up again, it will make another little line. I don't deal with it, it goes down. And if I keep doing this over and over and over every time I think of something and then I don't deal with it, it you become loopy. Your mind keeps like, uh, I have not finished this thought. I have not finished this thought and it will go back down. It just becomes inactivated because you didn't activate it. But then every time it does that, it creates it stronger and stronger. So we don't want that. And this is easy. We don't have to like spend, you know, I, I have to make a note and then wait for the proper moment. And no, 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 no. We deal with it right as it comes at that moment. You think about it, you deal with it, whether you, you know, you, you face it and deal with it directly or you switch it for something positive if you don't have time at that moment to take care of it and finish that thought. So you just uh, supplant it or um, exchange it for truth. That is reality. It did happen to you, whatever it was. So, But you change it for truth. Everything that the enemy uh, did, uh, tempted Yeshua in the wilderness was reality. He was hungry. He needed to eat. Um, if, you know, the word of God says that if you jump, then he will catch you. You know, that his angels will take care of you. So the, the devil was not making something up. He was giving him reality. But was it complete truth? No, it wasn't. Because how did Yeshua answer? It is written. And then he would say what is written. So that's what we do. Whenever something comes up, we just deal with it. It is written, this is the truth. Now, do if I have time to do this, and if not, the truth that goes out, because you have to remember, who is bringing it up to, to the surface? The Spirit of God. So if the Spirit of God is bringing it up and you use the Word of God, it accomplished what the Spirit wanted it to accomplish. So you are, you're working with the best psychiatrist, psychotherapist, psychologist in the world, the best coach, the Holy Spirit is there with you and is taking care of that. So we're going we're, we're gonna to study, we're going to practice different techniques and we're going to talk about them and we can all come up with the best way that we can um, utilize that in our lives, apply it to our lives because we're all different. And what what may um, work for me may work for you in a different way, just a different uh, perspective, a different side of it. Okay, so with that said, um, I just want to, let me move this out of the way. I just want to reiterate all that I just said with scripture. This is, These are scriptures that are not just important to us, these are important for our children to hear and know. Malachi 2.10 says, do, not, do we not all have one father? Is it not one God who has created us? Why do we deal treacherously, each against his brother, so as to profane the covenant of our fathers? So, in this scripture, we know that we have one father. And um, I'm just gonna use this to show you. This is a representation of the menorah in the temple. God was very clear how to make one of this. And he said, this lamp, this lamp stamp is gonna be made with one pure piece of gold, one because God is a hat, he is one. And from it, all these branches are gonna come out. So think about this, our father is one. That's what he's telling us there. I am one and every single one of you comes out of me. Everything comes out of him because he is the creator, right? Everything came from him. So he is our father. Everything comes through him. Therefore, we're dealing with each other. Branches, we're all brothers and sisters. That's why he says, 
why are we dealing with our brothers, you know, treacherously wrong, are hurting each other? Because we're all under one covenant. So we need to remember that just like you are under the same covenant, I am too. And so is she and my child and my grandbaby and all of us. So we have to keep that in mind. I, I have a friend that has said, you know, you sometimes when, especially when you lose your, your, your temper, you need to re treat your child like it's your neighbors because we tend to be a little harder with our own kids than with our neighbors because they're not our kids. We have to be careful. <laughs> so sometimes we need to keep that in mind. Uh, they are not really your kids are God's kids. So don't poke God in his eye, you know, because that's not going to be good. <laughs> so the next scripture says Galatians 4, 6, because we are sons or daughters and daughters, God has sent the spirit into his son. Uh, he sent the spirit into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So we know that the spirit, going back to what I just said before, here's the scripture to prove it, that the spirit that is in us, that breath that keeps us alive, that uh, the Holy Spirit is also our, our teacher, the, the counselor, the comforter. Uh, it is actually feminine in Hebrew. So it is that mother side of God that nurtures us and cares for us. We can cry out, Abba, Father, because the spirit of uh, his son is in us. So back again, one God, his spirit is in us. Ephesians 4, 6 says, one God and Father of all who is over, so one, one gold, over all, through all, that means he uses each one of us to accomplish his will, and in, he's also inside of us, in all. So that pretty much, you know, says it, says it to be uh, true that there is not, we can't do the us and them anymore, okay? That is God's job. Our job is to see him as our father. Everybody's our brother and sister. Everybody has the spirit in there in them because they're alive. Otherwise, they're dead. And we're going to deal from that premise. Okay. So um, this is a practical um, step to do. Something that if we repeat over and over, it would be easier and it will become second nature. And you're not going to have to even think about all this. Just uh, you can print it, put it somewhere, write it in your own words. Uh, the, the red and white is actually coming straight from conscious discipline. The yellow, I added it. I can't help it. I'm a pastor, so I'm going to give you my biblical side of it. So what she says that it's important that we do so that our children mimic everything they see us do. If every time I get angry, I go, and I throw a door or I break up something, they're going to do exactly the same. So if I practice this, they will mimic me. We literally have, um, our, we have cells, mimicking cells that repeat and act out what they see. Uh, that's why when you're watching a movie or they're talking to someone and she's telling you about this disgusting thing that she tried you make a face to as she's telling you and and or she's talking to you about a lemon and uh, you pucker your face and you know that's those mimicking cells that automatically do that in us so i have a little visual here that you can do with your kids it's, or you can buy it the, the, you can buy this at the dollar store and it has a little, if you can see, it has a little flower in the middle. It's a little windmill. So the, the uh, illustration for this is that, first of all, when you get angry, because you need to think what you're going to do. And when we get angry, we're not thinking. We're going straight down to the bottom, uh, to our survival mode that just reacts, fights, flights, or freezes. Those are the three reactions of our survival mode. 
we don't want to react to our children in survival mode because we're going to hurt them <laughs> and we're going to regret it late, later. So, so that that doesn't happen and we stay up here in the executive branch where we think where the mind of Messiah is, we smile even when you don't want to. You, you just saw the most, they broke everything or they just pushed each other or whatever they did that was not funny for you to even smile. You're going to smile. You're going to take a deep breath. So we, we say we smile and we ask the one that is in control of the universe, Abba, we cry out Abba, right? Take the wheel or take charge or sit on the throne. I need you to work this because I don't know what to do right now. Take a deep breath. So you smile, you smell the flower and you relax. You blow slowly. So take a deep breath and blow. When you, when something happens and they're screaming at each other, okay, kids, right now, everybody smile, take a deep breath, blow slowly. Okay, now tell me what happened. So then you are in a good place. You don't have a, a face that a, your child is afraid of because you are screaming and you just lost all your peace. Um, I would suggest, that's just me, I would suggest to say this thing is all up loud. You know, Abba, you're in control. Holy Spirit, feel me. I say, take this big, deep breath and Prince of Peace together, we can handle this. And you can say that to your child, you can handle this, it's okay. Let's talk and then we talk. So what happens is when all that we repeat and repeat, I had um, a friend of mine, her, her son uh, was battling with autism and he was nonverbal and but she would do this, she would say it out loud, and she would say, oh, Jesus, help me, every time that she would have, um, you know, something that she didn't know how to deal with. Uh, he was her only son, and, um, uh, and she would teach that to him. He says, when you don't know what to do, and you feel afraid, you ask, Jesus, help me. And, um, it was the cutest little thing. I, I train ABA to, to help her with um, his um, uh, development. And um, you would hear his little voice going, Jesus, help me, help me. He couldn't say help me. And he would say, help me. And it was the cutest thing. Uh, but he learned that from an early age. It was one of the first things he learned to say. I can say he's an adult now, verbal, he has driver's license, he's working um, in the capacity that he can, and but he is, um, you know, he one of his first thing, one of his favorite things is to worship. He knew that that calmed him down. He would put this uh, CD and just worship. So he needed that Prince of Peace to calm him. If anything we can ever teach our children, is to soothe themselves and self-regulation. If they can get those two, they have not even half of the battle won. They have like 90% of their battle, battle won. So um, that may seem like it's not that important, and it is. It is one of the most important things that we can teach them. So um, we're gonna go into this video. And the video, it's, um, like I said, it's just 10 minutes and it's called Making a Bully from Scratch. Bullying is one of the most misunderstood crises of our time. Bullies are created by a specific life path. We can reroute at any age if we didn't cause that, if it was, you know, like if we adopted a child or we uh, are dealing with a grandbaby when we know the road signs to look for along the way. 
Are you ready to help transform those bullies and victims into contrib contributing connected members of society? This, uh, this is a quote from Dr. Becky Bailey, who is a renowned developmental psychologist and early childhood expert and the founder of Conscious Discipline who made this video. And I'm gonna give you all the videos so that you can even watch them at, uh, uh, ahead of time. You can start working with that. And then when we get together, we get to discuss and see what worked, what didn't work. You know, this is what this time will be for us. So we'll watch the video and then I will be done with my teaching and we can talk, okay? So let me share the screen with you. Okay. And let me know if you can hear it well. How on earth did we not see the signs? Okay, hold on. Let me see. After the shock of another school shooting, have you ever wondered how on earth did we not see the signs? How could parents, family members, teachers, and neighbors not have seen? Oh, there you go. I didn't want to get there. Ah, it went all the way to the end. After the shock of another school shooting, have you ever wondered how on earth did we not see the signs? How could parents, family members, teachers, and neighbors not have seen a problem in the making? Our best hope of preventing school violence comes from understanding the bully victim dynamic. Bullying is a relationship issue. Together, let's see how to make a bully from scratch. It takes years to make a bully. In fact, all bullies start out as victims. A child doesn't wake up one day and decide, I think I'll be a bully any more than a child wakes up and says, I think I'll be a victim. Becoming a bully is a journey of specific life experiences starting at birth. There are road signs along the way that signal intervention is needed. We must know the signs to effectively derail the bully life path. To do this, it's important to distinguish between normal aggression and bullying. Children no longer say, he teased me or she hit me. Instead announced, I was bullied at school. Even the President of the United States, Barack Obama, says he was bullied for having big ears. He probably was indeed teased, but not bullied. Bullying is a specific and very serious type of aggression. Let's travel together on a five-stop journey into the heart of how a bully is made, so we can learn to see the signs. Missing them can be deadly. We will start at the beginning of human life, years before you might have thought. Step into our transporter. First stop, a mother's womb. Let's imagine these children to be represent all the kids in the world. Of these children, a handful will experience some form of prenatal stressors and develop a difficult temperament. These little ones are hard to soothe and have trouble sleeping or eating. You love them deeply but they're a little hard to fall in love with. When you play peekaboo, there are no smiles or giggles. These children turn and squirm away. A parent at this time might feel like, you've been crying since you were born. I tried blowing raspberries and you cried. I tried rocking you and you cried. I can't handle this anymore. Just shut up. This parent is really sick. I love you, but I'm having a hard time falling in love with you. Help, this is so hard. Some of these children with difficult temperaments will have very out of control behaviors. They're defiant toddlers, and later, hard to manage three-year-olds. Feeling powerless, parents resort to chronic, punitive discipline that victimizes their own children. I will count to three. You better get over here or else. One, two. By age three, we start to see two different types of victims emerging. One is aggressive, defiant, and hot-tempered. The other is passive, acquiescent, and anxious. Let's get back into the transporter. Our next stop is preschool and kindergarten. 
During this time, our children find themselves in more complex social settings like school. They have trouble playing with others from a lack of basic social skills and the ability to regulate their own behavior. Other children often exclude them, finding them boring or being frightened by their aggression and outburst. Teachers don't have the skills either and further compound the problem by using their own exclusion strategies. Go to timeout. Go sit in that chair now. These kids are emotionally reactive when things don't go their way. The aggressive child goes from upset to rage in seconds. The passive child gives up just as quickly. Since they cannot self-regulate, they are unable to learn appropriate social skills. The aggressive child hits, grabs, and takes what he wants. The passive child allows others to hit and grab without saying a word. Their chronically stressed brain creates mental distortions in the way they perceive themselves and others. The aggressive child sees hostile intent in others' everyday actions. The passive child believes he should be treated poorly and expects poor treatment from others. Adults tend to see the aggressive child as mean and the passive child as unmotivated or lazy. These judgments blind us to the roadside, allowing the aggressive child to move one step closer to becoming a bully and the passive child in becoming a victim. All aboard, let's continue on to first and second grade. Things get worse as our children move further into the world of friends. All human beings require a sense of belonging. These children, desperate for connection, are often pushed to the side by classmates, teachers, and schools. They have been excluded from connections with others since birth. This immense social pain actually involves the same pathways in the brain as physical pain in the body. Somewhere during this time, the social pain of rejection becomes so great, the brain undergoes significant changes. For both bullies and victims, the brain compensates for a life of painful disconnection. Buckle in as we continue to see what happens to these children ages 8 through 12. Both our bully and victim are still searching for connection and a place to belong. Since the mainstream tends to exclude them, they move towards one another. The bully says, you're mine, I own you, now do what I say or else. And the victim provokes or acquiesces because a bad connection seems better than no connection at all. Both our bully and victim are now immune to consequences because they simply don't care. One of the changes their brain has gone through is to shut down the caring system. Adults might threaten with, you're going to get kicked out of school. Go ahead, kick me out, I don't care. We are going to call your parents. So what? I don't care. We're going to take away computer privileges. I don't care. I don't like the computer anyway. We are going to ground you, spank you, send you to an alternative school. Yeah, so what? Since the part of the brain responsible for the motivation to care is literally turned off, there is no punishment or discipline that will help. Rewiring this system can only occur through connections with others. When children say, I don't care, their brain is unconsciously saying, I don't feel cared for by anyone, anywhere. Our final stop brings us to the teenage years. Continually trying so hard to belong, the bully may join a gang of tough guys or hook up with some mean girls. They perfect their craft through cyberbullying, spreading rumors, physical action, and day-to-day -day threats. At this point, the bully is now a dangerous teenager whose brain has changed in two very significant ways. The brain has become programmed to biochemically experience pleasure from hurting others. The bully's internal pharmacy provides him with opioids that act like morphine to deaden the pain of his life journey. The teenager is literally addicted to causing others pain. The brain is immune to rejection and ostracism 
This teenager no longer feels a need to belong or care. The skill of empathy is offline. Our victim, on the other hand, lacks the internal pharmacy that our bully has to provide him with relief. The teenager is prone to suffering quietly and then exploding. The pain can become so intense that he may kill himself or others, as we have seen play out in school shootings. <laughs> Bullying a bully with tough measures and excluding him with no tolerance policies compounds the problem. We are systematically applying the exact treatment that created the bully in the first place, and then expecting it to help. Effective discipline consists of two parts, the slow building of bonds and healthy relationships, and the quick strategies needed in the heat of the moment when conflict occurs. Bully prevention and intervention can only occur in the slow stages of relationship building. Our awareness of the five road signs and how a bully is made will save countless lives. Conscious Discipline has effective research interventions for every road sign along the way. Join us on a journey to a better world. We can walk this road together. Are you willing? Okay. So, stop sharing. There we are. I couldn't see. I, I was looking and I could see some questions, but I couldn't read them. So, let's go there. Um, Okay, I guess this is all between you girls. Okay, so if you can, let's see, let me see everyone. Okay, so my first question, and uh, there is not that many of us, so you guys can just, you know, depending on the noise level at your house, you can just unmute yourself. Oh, you, somebody, oh, Kathy, you didn't see the video, only the audio? Oh, it, did everybody see the video? No? Oh, no! You, you, oh, you, everybody heard, what, and I asked you, can you please tell me if you're looking at this? You said hear it, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so, well... Oh, that's just half of it because, you know, the way our brain works is we're very visual and uh, the, the scenes were very important for you to um, look at, uh, especially, and who knows, um, like I said, we prayed and we asked God to take control. So I don't know. Um, I tried this and I've, i recorded it because I've never put a video with somebody else's account. I've done it with my own account, my, my own Zoom, but it's been um, run through the Rooted Cafe Zoom account. So I thought it yeah, could- Yeah, Simi, it, it would come through. You just had to pick it. You were sharing your PowerPoint. And you have to switch what the screen you were sharing. So we can work on that for next time. But what we can oh, do is we can, if you, we can post the uh, video link and then maybe they can watch it later if that's okay. Yes, well, I wanted them to have it because this first time I just wanted you to, you're right. You, I think you told me that there was something that I needed to click and I forgot, Charlie, you're right. Um, sorry about that, ladies. This is my first time I do this like this. Um, but I wanted you to hear it from your perspective. And I wonder if that was um abba's uh way to not get you distracted and think i don't know uh, i apologize nonetheless but uh, is there anything as you heard that because we obviously were the video is showing you the extremes you know the bully in one end the victim in the other end and if you didn't um uh, grow up being a child with that um difficult temperament, 
you probably were right in the middle and didn't create much wave, so nothing much happened to you. Uh, so that being the case, uh, and our children will be, you know, somewhere in between too. But is there anything that anybody, you know, got out of what they heard <laughs> that uh, brought something back that you would like to share or ask? Well, for me personally, um, I it was hard not looking at my present children, but in my past, my brothers became the aggressors and I was the passive. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the emotion came at in the video at the high school age, which mm -hmm. was interesting because I didn't have emotion before that, but I have no memory from eight and younger. So that's all been blocked but it was interesting to see that within me came up at high school hmm. yeah so that that's great because usually at high school that is completely disconnected the emotional side so um it becomes even harder to to feel something um and god has a way and he knows obviously what we can handle and what we can't uh, to help us cope. It is to block things. And uh, because, and that's why there's uh, people with multiple personalities and things like that, because if they can, if my two year old is too traumatized, I still have to grow. And uh, so I, uh, that too becomes um, blocked and another will grow. And um, so, but then I may be 10 years old, 12 years old, 20, 60, and act like a two-year-old. And people are like, what is wrong with her? That, you know, that's like way too extreme for what actually happened. Her reaction was totally out, you know, not um, according to the, the moment, but it was my two-year-old. And my two-year-old doesn't have those boundaries. So it will scream and it would do things that my 60 year old wouldn't. And, uh, but all that to say, it's, it's, um, it's something easy that can be uh, worked. Uh, I'm gonna give you an example um, because that is, and I don't know if I share it in one of our classes, um, when I was uh, one and a half year olds and my babysitter broke my collarbone. Did I share it with you girls? No, okay. You you did hear it, Mary? Okay. Um, well, the, the trauma that happened made me react in different ways as I was older and I didn't know why I was acting that way. If I would see somebody, something that was physically aggressive, like a football game, uh, a boxing match or something like that, I would do this, it, would, it was an automatic response, right? So what ended up happening was that um, the Holy Spirit revealed that to me because she was screaming at me and shaking me. So my, you know, this one and a half little baby, year old baby is trying to protect her, her, herself from her. And all I could see was that anger in her face and shaking me, stop, stop. And, um, so whenever I would see aggression, like boxing to me is very, is very aggressive and football is very aggressive. I'm from Venezuela. We don't have football. Um, well, what we call football is your soccer. Uh, so uh, when I would see something like that, my reaction would automatically be that. And, and when the Lord showed it to me, it was simple. And this is what I was trying to explain. When that comes up, you deal with it. Oh, Okay, that's all it was. So I talked to this one year, one and a half year old myself, and I said, yes, you're afraid of her face, but she's no longer here. You are afraid of pain because you didn't know why your shoulder hurt. She broke your shoulder. You did have a cast. You no longer have a cast. Your shoulder is okay and you're not in danger. And that was it, it went away. So you talk to yourself and it's not like I was saying, you have to go to a psychiatrist and get hypnotized and no, none of that. 
you or go to a psych, uh, get, you know, be given drugs to calm yourself. No, 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 no. God wants us to see face, things face to face. And when he brings it up, he knows we're ready. And all we do is we speak truth. This is what happened. Yes, your collarbone was broken. Yes, you had a kiss. You no longer have it. Your bone is healed. You are okay. And it's gone. That loopiness ends because that train of thought went to the end, didn't stay loopy here, went to the end, closed it, gone. As simple as that. So that's those are the things that um, the Lord will bring to you when you're ready to deal with them. And, uh, and then you deal with them as they come. Um, cause he's, he is not just a wonderful and, and loving father. He is, um, he's, he knows what we can handle and what we can't. Anybody else, um, heard anything that would like to share or ask a question? can't see everybody i thought if nobody's going to say anything i it was interesting when you said that there will be children that provoke that actually went with some of the children i have now but mm -hmm. i never saw the provoking because i had one uh they love chaos the peace our home is very peaceful and it was very hard and so the provoke i didn't i never saw that emotion as part of I think she's passive. So that was something for me to really think on, on the provoking. Yeah. And one of the things that we need to remember is any of this spectrum where it is an aggressive or a passive, um, the reason why they got there is for lack of connection. Bullies are made and victims are made for lack of connection. So that is, if you remember uh, uh, towards the end, she said, how do we um, help that? And it was, you know, the, the kids were coming into classroom and uh, you hear, uh, you know, they were like doing high five. It's, you have to make connection. They need physical connection with you. And as we do the, the, um, the interventions for each group, um, H group, we will talk about, you know, what different inter, uh, physical touch and, 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 and connection, encouragement we can give. But it's um, one of the things that we see the most is when the physical, when, when the aggression or the withdrawal is physical, um, that, that child does not feel safe. Safety is the most important thing. That's why the whole Bible is about being safe. You know, he came to save us. <laughs> so it's all about salvation. That is the first thing that he will address because in, in, in order for that safety, remember how did Yeshua um, dealt with the, the hungry? He fed them. If they were lepers, he touched them, remember? And that, that melted them because they knew nobody would touch them, but he touched them and that just melted their hearts. So uh, that is very important. We address immediately what the need is. And sometimes the kids just have a low sugar and they just need to not, they don't need candy, uh, but uh, blood sugar, what I mean by that is just, you know, they need something. Are you hungry? You want a piece of cheese? <laughs> you know, you can just give them something to eat and then sit down and say, okay, tell me what happened. And that may be it. They are eating their cheese and I go, I'm okay, <laughs> and move on. It's like, that's all I wanted. Or they just want your attention. They just want your eye to eye and having a hand on their shoulder, a head, you know, on their head, just a little squeeze, come here, I need a hug. And you don't have to tell them that they need a hug. But the truth is, they do. And you say, come here, I need a hug. And when you hug them, you download your peace to them. Oh, I just love you so much. And you breathe forcefully in their 
ears and they start connecting one with the other. They never knew how to soothe themselves. They don't have the technique. They don't know how to do it. They don't know that that's what will calm them. So because I don't know, I'm going to bother you so that you do something because I don't know what to do. So that's usually when they are act out, they, they have a need. And if they don't act out physically, but they go, oh, mom, you never do this. Oh, mom, you, we never go here. And all my friends, da, da, da. when they become verbal, they don't feel connected. So then it's emotional. It's not survival mode. It's not physical. It's emotional. They need to hear, you know, I see you. You're working so well with your little siblings or uh, you were helping her. That was so, I saw you pick that up so that she wouldn't trip. That was so helpful. You have no idea how those words are so important. Children need to be seen. They need to be heard. And they need to know that you care. And though there may be just asking for a verbal connection. Let me see. I see a question here. Um, I'm refraining. Well, it's okay. I'm sorry you're not feeling well tomorrow. <laughs> um, and Caitlin, so help us with this in our family. Now. We're changing in a month. And we adjust to a little. Mm -hmm. Yes. So those, those um, warning uh, little red flags are important to know. And we will go over them for sure. And... Um, but um, we just have five more minutes and um, I just wanted to reiterate what I said. The most important thing is you put God first, you um, repeat out loud what you're doing, especially if you have children that are like your grandchildren, they are being raised by your kids. If they're not raised at your house. Uh, when you have you know, cousins, somebody that is not been raised in your house either, uh, or you have foster children or your kids' friends that come home to play with your kids. So we, we will always have opportunity to utilize this because uh, we, we, whether we have one, two, or three, or however many children we have, they are not isolated. They have friends, families, and we have you know other children that will be in our care at any given time. And the most important thing, like I said, is that they know that God goes first. And uh, when we don't know what to do, God does. And we just hold each other. We breathe together. We calm ourselves. Our brain, when we are fearful, our brain creates um, the neurotransmitters that literally hurt. So that's why you, you see children that, are, that go to extreme pain, uh, you know, extreme situations, and they will bang the heads on the wall or on the floor. Or they will do things like that because right now my head hurts and I want it to stop and they don't know how to make it stop. So that's what they will do. So smiling whether you want it or not, whether you don't feel like you really want to smile, this movement, all these muscles create immediately in my brain the, it's like, oh, she's smiling. Let's create those fun neurotransmitters that make her feel woohoo. So those are created. So if you, it's, it's like drugs. If you really want to, you know, take a pill, smile. <laughs> And literally put something that is funny, laugh, it's important, then that will change the chemistry in your brain. Um, but they need to know, God is in control. I can smile at this because I know help is on its way. Feel your lungs. The Holy Spirit will help you heal, restore, bring to mind. It's your teacher. If you don't know what to do, it, she will tell you. She will help you. And your Prince of Peace, it's all you need.
let him cover you. And then when you do that and you show it with your face and you say it with your mouth and you change and you say, okay, you can even say, ah, oh, everybody step a minute. Oh, I can handle this. Too much screaming right now. Can you all do this with me? I need it, please. Can you all breathe with me? <laughs> and then you do that. You know, it's, um, it is amazing. Children will respond so much better to that that when you say, stop it, everybody shut up, they scream louder because you know what? They are afraid of you. They're creating more of those um, chemicals in their brain that are hurting and they will either shut completely down and go under a table or somewhere in a closet or something away from you, or they will fight you even more because they're in pain. So um, just breathing is wonderful. <laughs> and that was our smile, the um, star, S for smile, T for take a deep breath, A for, um, and relax. So I will be sending you that uh, I have um, a grouping of all the videos we're going to watch. This one and all the other five. And in, in, one, um, in one folder. And we're going to post them so that you can watch them. You can go. You may have a teenager. You know, your kids are too big. Now, you, you don't skip the other ones. Everything builds on the other. Nothing is isolated. You did not were born and became a adolescent. You had to go through those stages. And those stages, whatever you missed, is what's making this teenager so, uh, time so so difficult. So it is important to watch them all. And um, and whatever it is that the when you watch the video. <laughs> I know you only heard it when you watch the video. Uh, whatever triggered you, find scriptures that will be, if, if it's fear, find something that helps you trust him. If it's lack of love, some scripture that tells you that he loves you. Whatever it is, um, even like in your case, Kathy, when you say you don't remember, that you know the the peace of God will protect your mind and heart in Messiah, and that will that surpasses all understanding because you don't know you don't know what happened. It will cover you with His peace. So we speak truth so that the truth goes into those places and heal. And as they heal, then they're able to come up to the surface for us to deal with them. But God created us to help each other. It, the, he didn't create for somebody in outside our family of faith to take care of us. We're, we're here for each other. So there are ways that we can do this and guide each other and help each other even with our own testimonies. So don't, uh, don't lose heart. And so you'll watch those videos and then on the next in February and March, We'll watch the one from zero to three. Oh, it's great seeing you all. And for those that will watch the replay, we send blessings to you. And I hope this helped. Thank you. Thank you, Simi. My pleasure. <laughs>